Okay, we're going to uh, skip ahead to the end of Godfrey's coverage. This is about three or four minutes long, so uh, just bear with it. And remember that this is, um, this is how people got the news in 1945. Television barely existed. And I, uh, I've met many people for whom their earliest memory is listening to the description of FDR's funeral cortege. Um, it's an early memory for my parents and uh, for many, many people. And if you were listening to CBS and Arthur Godfrey, it sounded like this. Confusion reigned for a few seconds, and finally they cut back to New York, where an organist had been standing by to uh, play some music in tribute to Ro Roosevelt after the funeral. And this is what listeners heard for a minute or two. I'm going to let this play. This is Edward R. Murrow. He entered Buchenwald on Thursday, April 12th, and made this broadcast April 15th.
death had already marked many of them, but they were smiling with their eyes. I looked out over that mass of men to the green fields beyond, where well-fed Germans were plowing. A German, Fritz Kirchheimer, came up and said, May I show you around the camp? I've been here ten years. An Englishman stood to attention, saying, May I introduce myself? Delighted to see you. And can you tell me when some of our folks will be along? I told him. This is from the end of his report. And as we walked, we talked. The two doctors, the president and the tech, agreed that about 6,000 had died during March. Kirchenheimer, the German, added that back in the winter of 39, when the Poles began to arrive, without winter clothing, they died at the rate of approximately 900 a day. Five different men asserted that Buchenwald was the best concentration camp in Germany. They had had some experience with the others. Dr. Heller, the tech, asked if I would care to see the crematory. He said it wouldn't be very interesting because the Germans had run out of coke some days ago and had taken to dumping the body into a great hole nearby. Professor Richard said, perhaps I would care to see the small courtyard. I said yes. He turned and told the children to stay behind. As we walked across the square, I noticed that the professor had a hole in his left shoe and the toe sticking out of the right one. He followed my eyes and said, I regret that I am so little presentable, but what did one do? At that point, another Frenchman came up to announce that three of his fellow countrymen outside had killed three SS men and taken one prisoner. We proceeded to the small courtyard. The wall was about eight feet high. It adjoined what had been a stable or garage. We entered. It was floored with concrete. There were two rows of bodies stacked up like corpses. They were thin and very white. Some of the bodies were terribly bruised, though there seemed to be little flesh to bruise. Some had been shot through the head, but they bled but little. All except two were naked. I tried to count them as best I could, and arrived at the conclusion that all that was mortal were more than 500 men and boys lay there in two neat piles. There was a German trailer, which must have contained another 50, but it wasn't possible to count them. The clothing was piled in a heap against the wall. It appeared that most of the men and boys had died of starvation. They had not been executed. But the manner of death seemed unimportant. Murder had been done at Ubenbar. God alone knows how many men and boys have died there during the last 12 years. Thursday, I was told that there were more than 20,000 in the camp. There had been as many as 60,000. Where are they now? As I left that camp, a Frenchman who used to work for Halas in Paris came up to me and said, You will write something about this, perhaps. And he added, To write about this, you must have been here at least two years. And after that, you don't want to write anymore. I pray you to believe what I have said about Buchenwald. I have reported what I saw and heard, but only part of it. For most of it, I have no words. Dead men are plentiful in war, but the living dead, more than 20,000 of them in one camp. And the country around about was pleasing to the eye, and the Germans were well fed and well dressed. American trucks were rolling towards the rear, filled with prisoners. Soon they would be eating American rations, as much for a meal as the men at Buchenwald received in four days. If I have offended you by this rather mild account of Buchenwald, I'm not in the least sorry. Okay, I promise I won't make you listening to any, anything like that again. Um, now, that's a very chilling and powerful description. And uh, Morrow made that broadcast uh, Sunday, April 15th, the day that FDR was buried. And that would have been the first that many people in the States uh, heard about the camps.